Hello, my name is Ritoza Das, volunteer of Applied Forensic Research Sciences and today's topic is Scope in Forensic Anthropology. Now let's see what the PPT covers. First, what is Forensic Anthropology? What is Forensic Anthropologist? Branches of Forensic Anthropology and where can Forensic Anthropologists work? So what exactly is Forensic Anthropology? Forensic Anthropology is the application of the study of humans to situations of modern, legal or public concern. It includes the collection, preservation and analysis of human skeletal remains for identification and reconstruction of the events surrounding the death of an individual. How does it help in forensic science? The principle of skeletal identification is that the human skeleton is unique in some way. Most bones have unique characteristics that arise from genetics, growth, use, injury or trauma. These characteristics are fixed and unaltered and very unique to every individual and thus helps in distinguishing them from every other individual and this ultimately leads to the identification. So we can say that the law of individuality works here. It helps in the determination of species, age, gender, race and height of the skeleton. So let's talk about how exactly does it help in determining these characteristics. So determination of species. The bones should be sorted out into human and non-human bones. Determination of age. The appearance and union of centers of bone growth and certain other changes in bones and teeth helps the investigator in determining the age of the individual at the time of death. Determination of sex. The adult skeleton has several morphological differences between the different sexes which are utilized to determine the sex of the individual. Determination of race. The bones have certain morphological characteristics which are confined to individuals of a particular race. Based on these, the racial group to which the individual belongs to can be found. And at last, the determination of height. The height of the individual can be calculated with reasonable accuracy by applying formulae to the length of individual bones, especially in the length of long bones. Now let's talk about forensic anthropologists. So who are they? They are experts in archaeological techniques which uses the knowledge of osteology, which is the study of bones, human remains and other related factors to help recover and analyze human remains from the ground. They are experts in analyzing human remains and are often called upon to work in forensic investigations involving deaths that may have been caused by a natural disaster such as hurricane or forest fire or a crime. So using their knowledge of bones, a forensic anthropologist can examine human remains and determine how a person died such as whether it was a suicide or homicide or from accidental or natural causes. Forensic anthropologists can determine with a great deal of certainty a deceased person's age, weight, sex, height and also diet. Scope in Forensic Anthropology The scope of forensic anthropology is immense and increasing every day. The preference of many killers to dump the bodies of their victims in remote sites means that most often the police have nothing but skeletal remains to aid in their investigation. It is then left to the forensic anthropologist to use this flimsy evidence to shed some light on the case with his or her expertise. Now let's talk about the branches in forensic anthropology. The first one is forensic taphonomy, the second one is forensic archaeology, the third one is forensic craniometry and the fourth one is forensic odontology. Forensic taphonomy. Forensic taphonomy is a subfield of forensic anthropology that examines how taphonomic forces have altered evidence that is, the subject of a medical legal investigation. It examines the remains themselves and asks how decomposition and destruction, or a lack thereof, of the hard and soft tissues was brought about. It is basically used to determine the time since death. Various factors include environmental factors, individual factors, which are subjects uh, which bring the composition process themselves such as body size and age during death 
and lastly cultural or behavioral factors such as variables that characterize human mortuary activities such as embalming, autopsy procedures and asylum induced trauma. Forensic Archaeology Forensic archaeology is the application of archaeological techniques and methods to the medical legal field, normally the enforcement of criminal law. For example, forensic archaeologists have been employed by police to excavate grave sites in order to reconstruct the events that took place before the burial of the victim. It includes excavation, locating the body underground, understanding how the body reacts with the soil it's buried in, which is basically studying the burial environment. Next, we'll talk about forensic craniometry. Craniometry is the technique of measuring the bones of the skull. Brain volume data and other craniometric data is used in mainstream science to compare modern day animal species and to analyze the evolution of human species in archaeology. According to craniometry, skull is categorized into three types. Torosocephalic, which means long and thin, bicephalic, which means short and broad, and mesocephalic, which means intermediate length and breadth. Forensic Odontology Forensic dentistry or forensic odontology is the proper handling, examination, and evaluation of dental evidence, which will be then presented in the interest of justice. The evidence that may be derived from teeth is uh, the age and identification of the person to whom the teeth belong. This is done using dental records or anti-mortem photographs. Now let's talk about where can forensic anthropologists work. So forensic anthropologists are employed in universities and various forensic facilities, mainly labs. Most of them are involved in teaching while also performing research related to forensic anthropology. In the US specifically, the forensic anthropologists are also employed by FBI throughout the country. They help uh, the police and also work closely associated with them. Now let's see how much you have learned. Which type of race can be identified from the examination of skull? A. Caucasoid, B. Mongoloid, C. Negroid and D. All of the above. If you know the answer, do comment in the section below. <clears throat> For the previous video, the topic was history of forensic psychology. And the question was, when was forensic psychology recertified as a specialty by American Psychological Association? And the answer is C, 2008. These are the references that was used while making this presentation. Thank you and hope you liked the video.